Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on the Dungeon Dive, we are going to do a detailed unboxing of The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, the adventure game from Modifius. I recently got this. This is the retail version. I wanted to see what the retail version would be like. So for those of you who didn't back it on Kickstarter, like I didn't back it on Kickstarter, uh, this is what you can expect when you buy this very, very expensive game. I think it retails for about $130. I got it on Amazon. I think it was $120. Uh, that's a lot of money. Board games are really expensive. All right, so let's see here. Uh, Skyrim, the adventure game. Adventures in the world of Skyrim. Before the Dragonborn came to Skyrim. Skyrim the Adventure Game is a resettable legacy experience that allows you to delve into Tamriel's past, battle foes, hoard treasure, and thwart a plot that, def that threatens the whole of Skyrim. You are surviving members of the Blades, a legendary group who long protected the Empire of Tamriel. Abandoned by your former allies, you must work together with your fellow adventurers to defeat enemies, embark on intriguing quests, and face the looming threat that seeks to destroy everything you swore to protect. In this endlessly replayable game of branching quests and mysteries to uncover, you take on the role of a brave adventurer. In co-op or solo adventures with hundreds of hours of gameplay, Build your unique character, upgrade your equipment, delve into dungeons, and travel across the holds of Skyrim. Gain experience, find treasures, and battle Draugar, Daedra, dragons, and more. Play through six chapters of two hugely replayable campaigns spanning 25 years in the history of Tamriel. Each decision matters. Choose wisely, and you may live to tell the tale of how you too used to be an adventurer. So yes, my uh, history with Skyrim is a lot like a lot of people's history with Skyrim. I have played the hell out of it. Uh, well over 500 hours of the video game. I've never come close to beating the game. I've never even gotten uh, up to right where you get to, the, right where the Civil War stuff is starting. Like the third quest, I, I, I always opt out of the main quest. My favorite thing to do in Skyrim is just go on go and explore go on random quests and just kind of live my life in the setting i do like the the faction quests i've done all of those in the video game and i'm hoping that i can make my stealth archer right well uh, the, the joke is uh, every time you start a new game of skyrim uh, what kind of stealth archer will i be but yeah let's uh let's see let's get this thing unopened here so I also got the From the Ashes expansion, and I have already opened that. I wanted to take a look at that. Um, the expansions are very expensive too, like $70 for a handful of cards. That's, it's, this, is pro this is one of the most expensive games I've ever seen. I, uh, it, people who buy this game and complain about Quest for the Lost Pixel being expensive, yeah, I don't want to hear it. No. <laughs> <laughs> this game doesn't come with nearly as many cards as Quest for the Lost Pixel, and it is uh, just as much, especially when you factor in the expansions. So, all right, let's see what we have in this box here. We have some baggies. That's always nice. We have our adventure game rule book and our uh, adventure game scenario book. I like the size of those. I've heard that this is one of the worst rule books of all time. I spent a few days reading the um, Board Game Geek uh, forum for this game, and it's it, every single post is a rules question. There is nothing posted about people enjoying playing the game or their experiences. There, there's nobody is posting an adventure diary or cool things they've experienced. Every single question or every single thread is, how do I do this? Uh, what does this mean? So I've heard that this is truly one of the worst rule books ever written. I, I just like that just kind of blows my mind that a company the size of Modifius working on an IP, the pop with a popularity of Elder Scrolls would completely botch the rule book. But hey, 
And that's, it's, it's also weird because the call to arms uh, rule book for the miniatures war game is actually pretty good. So here we have our rule book here, heroes of the game. I like the layout. I like the way it looks. Again, I do like the size of it. At least it's not one of those big giant square things. But okay, so we have our rule book there. Here we have our adventure game scenario book. Pretty thin here for an unlimited number of plays. Uh, the adventure game, the tutorial. Okay, so I have watched a playthrough of the tutorial. And it seemed okay. I like that you can kind of learn the game or play the game while you are learning. So I'll definitely be going, uh, going through that here. So we have campaign one, the blades and campaign two, the civil war, uh, the whole civil war story in Skyrim has, has just never uh, appealed to me at all. I don't like those kinds of stories typically in fantasy. I don't like political fantasy. I like questing fantasy. So I know that there is a way to play this game in a kind of a free free form mode or free questing mode. And that is probably the way I will play it most often. Free roam mode. Let's see. Free roam mode. What is free roam mode? Let's read about this real quick. The story of Skyrim Dwelling Blades is the stuff of legend. But with this new game mode, you can also create your own unique stories and enjoy the beauty and perils of the home of the Nords. The, the free roam mode doesn't take place in a specific timeline which allows the references uh, to the Great War and Dragon Encounters to happen spawn, uh, simultaneously. To start a new free, ro free Roam game, draw all five Free Roam events to begin creating the Free Roam event deck. To this deck, you may add any or all of the following chapter cards. Okay, so yeah, you can just kind of play, I think, with everything. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That's probably the mode that I will play the most, especially with the stuff that I can add in from the uh, from the Ashes expansion. Okay, here we have a few uh, save boxes. We have our character, our, our uh, dual layer, double layer character sheets. Those look pretty cool there. Pretty nice. I like the textured back. That is very classy there. Nice look to those. All right, we have, uh, have another couple player save boxes. And here we have our map. I'm going to take a break here and unfold the map and set it up so we have something to look at in the background. I will be right back. Okay, so here we have our map. It is kind of weird. There's a weird kind of disconnect going on. From the cards I've seen in the uh, From the Ashes expansion, all of the cards use art from the video game, straight from the game. And it's really odd to me that they didn't follow through with that look to create a cohesive look with the map. This map is kind of a really generic uh, painting and it lacks a ton of the detail from the map in the uh, video game. Maybe because this takes place before the time of the video game, so all of the little setting, all of the little places wouldn't have been on the map. But um, the map does not look great. And that's kind of my initial impression, impression, my initial impression of Skyrim the Adventure board game is the look of the game is pretty uninspiring. I think I might call it an aggressively ugly game. It just when I was uh, when it was on Kickstarter and I was looking at it, I was just I could not get excited about it. And a lot of that has to do with the way it looks. Um, yeah, it's just weird. I wonder why they didn't use any. Maybe this is some concept art, but I, I would have liked to have seen some more really beautiful concept art being used in the game. And the tokens are they're OK. There are three sheets of tokens here. All right. And then we have one tray here. So in this tray, we have some uh, plastic cubes. We have some custom dice. Ooh, these dice actually 
feel really nice. Yeah, those are those are nice dice. They have a uh, they have a, a good heft to them. I like those. I like when a dice uh, I like when a dice feel substantial. And here we have a bunch of mini cards. So what do we have here? Uh, let's uh, let's just start opening. I don't think there are any spoilers in the mini cards. Uh, let's see here. So it looks like these are, we have some treasures, some different statuses, Blessing of Mara. Wow, they uh, really went all out on the art design there. What is the point of the text being microscopic when there is, when like 98% of the card is blank space? And, and the, the icons are so tiny. What? what? What's the point of this card? Yeah, if that's all they're going to put on here, uh, just make this a token. It, th that kind of bugs me. That bugs me a lot, actually, when cards just have almost nothing on them. Just uh, weird. Yeah, yeah. like I said, this is one of the most visually unappealing games I think I have seen recently. Uh, a few more statuses. Uh, so these are kind of mixed in. You got to do the separation of the cards because of how they were uh, put together at the factory here. Like if you showed me this horse card and you told me that this was a card made by somebody on BGG as a, as a fan made supplement for another game, I would say, uh, I, I would believe that I, if you showed me this and said that this was a professional card from a professional company like Modif Modifius, based on a professional game like Skyrim, I don't think I would believe you, but there it is. I'm holding it in my hands. That is the truth. The Bow of Submission, that's cool. The Blade of Woe. Marash's Sword, the Orb of Destruction. So lots of cool stuff. Looking forward to getting some of this cool stuff. Of course, a Potion of Ultimate Healing, that's nice. All right, here we have some more cards here. More statuses and more treasure. Thane of Winterhold, that's a status, so you can't become the Thane of the various uh, strongholds there. A fellow's receptacle, Stormcloak's Axe, the Bow of the Forsworn, the Rorix Shield, Rorix Bow, Ebony Blade. Yeah, so all the gear that you would expect out of a Skyrim game. I don't think there's any way, I don't think there's any kind of like component crossover between this and Call to Arms. I guess that could be kind of cool, but I don't think there is. So here we have um, enchantment upgrades. So there is enchanting, of course. Different, all different kinds of enchantments here. Again, just, they, it's kind of like in every decision they made on Skyrim, the adventure board game. They say, hey, we can make this look cool and visually appealing, or we could choose not to. And they chose not to. Aggressively, they chose not to make this a visually appealing game. Okay, we have more items here. So there are a lot of items. I do like that. More axes, some iron armor, iron dagger, novice robes, an iron sword, a hide armor, potion of stamina, potion of magicka, ragged robes, fists. Okay, I can equip some fists, some claws, potion of healing. All right. And it looks like we have, let's see what these are here. Uh, some shields here, dwarven mace, a steel great sword. That's pretty cool. Ebony armor, leather armor, a glass bow, elven dagger, a leather helmet, ice storm, rain, a raised zombie, incinerate. So here we have some of our magical spells. I do like all the gear. All the loot is pretty cool. And I think the expansion also adds quite a bit uh, more loot and stuff. 
Looks like some more treasure. Looks like maybe some gold treasure, maybe some more powerful treasure here. Uh, lock picking tools. I don't know. Is there a lock picking mini game? I'm not sure if the, how that would work with with a with a card game. More steel, great swords. And what do we have here? We have a dragon bone sword, dragon bone war axe, dragon bone war hammer, dragon bone bow, dragon plate shield. So we have all of our dragon stuff there, kind of like the ultimate gear there. And we have one more small deck of cards here. Our oak, or orcish great swords, amulet of the assassin, uh, frenzy, the ruby necklace, a call to arms, glass armor, daedric. Uh, yeah, just more stuff here. Some more spells. Not a lot of uh, magic cards. Didn't see, uh, didn't see too many magic spells here. All right, let's. Uh, I'm gonna push this off to the side here. Now we have a few little minis. So these are the minis, I think, just for the just for the player characters, I think. Got some of these dudes here. I know probably uh, some people might use these in uh, Call to Arms. I'm not sure. When I have played Call to Arms before, I have used uh, Massive Darkness minis and um, and uh, minis from Zombicide Black Plague. I thought those those work pretty well there. And of course, these have to go back into their own specific slots. All right, and then for some reason, we get this red dude here. Not sure what he's for. And the bottom tray here. Wow, there is a lot of empty space in this box. I don't know. Is, that, is there that many expansion cards because the expansion for from the ashes is like a stack of cards about an inch big um that is a lot of there's a lot of air in this box i guess that's what you're paying for i guess you're paying more for the ip more for the license right it probably would have been better just for modifius to uh, make up their own adventure game in their own world why didn't they make a five leagues from the borderlands adventure game they wouldn't have had to pay for the license. They have all of the background, all of the lore, and all of that stuff. Um, that probably would have been a better use of resources. Uh, when visiting the market, so we have our, our cheat sheets here for combat, um, your turn sequence, when visiting the market, and when visiting your various strongholds. So I'm sure those will come in handy. All right, we have our card dividers here. And then we get into all of our spoiler cards. So I'm probably not going to show these because these are all the kind of cards that you would uh, get for your for your various quests and all of that. I'm not going to, I don't want to open all of these right now. You have to put them in a number order, but let's just see. You do get quite a few, but again, for $130, $140 with tax, uh, yeah. We have uh, the Dungeon Challenge Campaign 2, Chapter 3. Again, that is a lot of blank space on these cards here. Um, there we have that back. A Mud Crab there. So an enemy. You can fight a Mud Crab. A War Quest with a uh, Dramora Valkanaz there. Uh, an Encounter. You see the shadow of Tavent Rathis sneaking through the Siege of Whiterun. You'll have to run through the battle to catch her. All right. Here we have, it looks like an NPC there. Nalvarla Omeds. I want to test what I am learning. Okay. A follower. Okay, so there are definitely some followers. That's cool. Clean hands. No need to break a sweat when I can pay somebody else to do it for me. The Other Side, Part 3. Success and Failure. I think this game does have kind of a, a, a fail-forward mechanism with its campaigns. You can kind of keep playing even if you fail a task. That is kind of cool. And yeah, that is, uh, yeah, that's, that's everything. That's everything you get for 130 bucks. That is a lot. Let me. I'm gonna go grab the from the ashes just so we can kind of take a look at some of the cards. 
Okay, so from the ashes here, like I said, I've already opened uh, this one. I, I, I did want to look at it. And uh, so here is that. So this um, has something like six little mini campaigns that you can mix in. And it also has, so it has this blessings of the divine. And then these cards here are separated into... And again, for a $70 expansion, you get a stack of cards about that size, one little sheet of tokens, a small stack of mini cards, and a handful of minis. Um, that is, yeah, yeah, that, that's a, a pretty, pretty expensive um, expansion here. But your, your little mini campaigns are basically, in this game, are basically combat campaigns. And so you're going to have your Charis there, your Ice Wraiths, your Snow Bears, Demora, uh, Jamora, Caitiff, Jamora Archer, a Jamora Mage, a Fire Mage, an Ice Mage, a Storm Mage, a Skeleton, a Ghost, Corrupted Shade, Dwarven Spider Soldier, a Dwarven Sphere Garden Guardian, and a Dwarven Spider Clutter, the Living Statue. And then these are all of the ghosts. So there are some ghosts of the dead blades that you kind of have to deal with as a repercussion in this game here. So there are those cards there. We have the uh, the plights in rusty armor, skeleton berserker, a skeleton mage, a skeleton mob. I like fighting skeletons, so I like to see all of these skeleton cards. Those are pretty cool there. And then we have uh, this pack of cards here. We have our Draugr here, the White, the White Lord, the Hulking Draugr, uh, the Draugr Scourge, the Draugr Scourge Lord, the Death Lord, a Dragon Cultist, Hesna Adeus, Berberus Greenwing, Erton Pesius, Gavat Gavatrius Gors, Tela Anguistus, Kasha, Rar Volok, they must, they like roll up random, random uh, letter, <laughs> letter combinations for these names. Corsa Broken, Ulobog Shug, Marita Shusta. And here we have our Bandit Queen little event there. And some distant um, Grokken Drog. Circling Drokren Grog. Flying Drokren Drog. Uh, landed Grok Ring Drog, Enraged Grok Ring Drog, and Defensive Grok Ring Drog, and Retreating Grok Ring Drog, Wounded Grok Ring Drog, Cornered Grok Ring Drog, Agonizing Grok Ring Drog, Grok Ring Drog. And I believe this red dude here is Grok Ring Drog. And so when you get to fight this dragon, it's kind of like a little complex boss fight. So that's kind of cool. Definitely looking forward to that. Uh, let's see what kind of small cards you get, what kind of new items you get to mix in. So we have the Staff of Fireballs, the Staff of Ice Storms, Wall Frost. Okay, so we have our staves here with different magical abilities. Staff of Courage, Staff of Mending, that is super cool. Ebony, Armor of the Warrior. So yeah, these are some pretty cool items here. Some more magical items that we're probably going to want to equip. And some various statuses, the Mage Stone, the Warrior Stone, the Blessings of RK, Blessing of uh, Julianos. And we also have here one more little deck of statuses and treasures. Potion of Plentiful Well-Being, Ring of Renewal, Amulet of Chaos Magic, Dark Brotherhood, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Dark Brotherhood Contract. So the Dark Brotherhood is in here. That's kind of cool. Amulet of RK. And yeah, that's about it. What is oddly missing from this expansion? Rules. There are no rules of how to incorporate any of this stuff. Maybe it mentions it in the core rulebook. Or maybe that was another oversight from Mod Modifius. So I'm not looking forward to learning this game. I've heard it's very difficult to learn. Um, I'm going to watch some videos and try my best. I, I am looking forward to trying this game. I do like Skyrim. I like the idea of that free roam mode where you can just go out and have random quests and ignore the campaign because that's kind of the way I like to play Skyrim. So I'm hoping that provides me with 
a, a sense of adventure like something like Runebound Second Edition or Talisman does. You know, hopefully there are some modern mechanisms in here that make it more of just a a, a luck fest. And I'm hoping there is kind of a a, a, a nice emergent narrative that I can lose myself in at the table. So, all right, guys. Well, hope you enjoyed taking a look at this unboxing of Skyrim, the adventure game, along with the From the Ashes expansion. Have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.